Byron, before we close, I've got to ask you about the shale boom. Uh, a lot of government forecasts are talking about in 20 years the U.S. is going to be a net uh, exporter of uh, oil. And then also, if you could just briefly touch on uh, if what your thoughts are on, on if we have peaked in cheap oil in, in the world as well when you answer that question about shale boom. Oh, well, well, actually, the, the two questions answer themselves. You know, have we peaked in terms of our ability to produce cheap oil? Yes. And the absolute proof of that is that we're producing shale oil. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. uh, in the olden days, you would drill a vertical well into a sandstone or a limestone. You would do it, search some completion work, and boom, out comes the oil, out comes the natural gas. Okay, fine. Yeah, that, those days are gone. Those days are over. I mean, every now and then you might find a, you know, a place where you can still do that. But the traditional method of drilling wells, you know, the vertical well right through the formation. Those those are so economic, those are so far behind us. You know, they they, they are they are museum they are museum specimen uh of industrial activity anymore. Uh the modern way of doing it is directional wells with multi stage uh fracking uh that breaks open the uh formations and allows the rock to, or the uh, fluids to flow into the well bore. That's all well and good. The problem is uh, the uh, decline rates on these things. Uh, you know, it, you know I, I've seen uh, I've seen data from all over North America, and I mean all over. I mean, we're talking Eagle Fort in Texas. We're talking the Bakken in North Dakota, the Marcellus in Pennsylvania. You name it, I've seen it. I've seen the data. When you look at a lot of these decline rates in the first year of of the life of these uh, very expensive, highly complex, very technologically advanced wells. The first year of the well, you've got a decline rate of 40%. Second year, you've got another 40%. So you do, do a little bit of math here. By the end of the year two, you're up, or you're down around 75% decline off of your off of uh, of what of what you began with. Which means that you know you drill a well and you complete it and you start producing. You need to skid that rig over and start drilling your next well. You know, which will take you six months or eight months or a year to, to get that one. Because by the time you get that second well going, your first well is in a very serious state of decline. Basically, what we've done is we, we're building an entire industry, an entire oil and gas recovery industry on what I call a drilling treadmill. You know, and, and, and that, that treadmill is just getting steeper and steeper. You've got to drill more and more wells, faster and faster, to keep your production rates up. So when people say, oh, oil is going to be, you know, abundant, it's going to be cheap, we're going to export it, we're going to blah, 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 we're going to do all these things. No, no, don't bet on it. I mean, it, it, there are things about this that are very, very good. The technology is very impressive. Uh, you're going to be able to make a lot of money if you own the right drilling companies, the right completion companies, the right drill pipe companies, things like that. You know, there are companies that are going to do very well, uh, you know, in all of this. But but we're looking at a very uh, difficult to sustain uh, industrial process. So what, what we are doing in a political sense, in a strategic sense, we are buying time in terms of our of our energy use and in terms of our ability to produce uh, usable energy. We're buying time for the country. We're buying time for the economy. But uh, the, the, but we're just pushing that day of reckoning uh, out by a little bit and not by a lot. And the part about exporting lots of oil and exporting lots of natural gas, I really don't believe that that is going to uh, – uh, be a big part of the future. I'm not saying that there won't be a tanker here or a tanker there that, you know, sails away, you know, filled with oil or LNG or something like that. But um, uh, yeah, it don't, it, it, it's not going to completely overhaul and revolutionize the uh, energy economics of North America. Byron King of Agora, thank you so much for your time, sir. Oh, it's great to talk with you. Thank you.